everybody, this is Denise from Foursquare Micro Farm. So here I am making a video, like really late at night. Normally I would not do this because I would want really good daylight to make really good videos. But I just came from a friend's house a couple hours ago and I was really excited and I wanted to go ahead and slick this out so that I can prep it for spinning even though I have tendonitis and I'm not supposed to be spinning anything. But I wanted to go ahead and get it started. And uh, before I flick it out, I figured I better get a little something of what it looks like prior to. Um, and so the reason why this is so special is that this will be the first fleece uh, for my fairy tales video. Um, and it's the series will be called Fairy Tales um, from the Knit Fairy Stash. And Knit Fairy... Uh, known to us in real life as Nancy. She was Knit Fairy on Ravelry Passed Away this year. And so those of us um, who were in her knitting circle uh, got together and we went through her stash donating some yarns and fibers to places. Uh, some will be sold with the proceeds being donated to the charities that she chose and some of the items uh, were bequeathed to those of us in the knitting group. And so I inherited a large stash of breed studies. And Nancy was a wonderful one. And she had a really large collection of yarns and fleeces. And so many different fleeces, fleeces that I've only, you know, read about in my sheep book. And so I can imagine this taking two years for me to go through the breed studies that she has and all the fiber that she has. It's, it's all been scoured and a lot of it was placed in these pillow cases with a moth be gone mix. So it's all pretty much ready to be discovered and used. And so um, I just was really excited today going through that stash. And here I am I'm going to call, or I should say I'm going to tag all these videos with the um, fairy tales from the stash of Knit Fairy. And that will link all of the items that came from her collection together. And this particular fleece is labeled Gulf Coast. And I've never worked with Gulf Coast fleece before. And just by first impression, it kind of gives me the feel of a softer down breed type. And I automatically know just looking at the crimp. And you can see that beautiful crimp. And the staple length that I am going to love it. Um, I have to apologize for my fingernails. I've been dyeing yarn for the past week and a half, especially since I'm not spinning because of the tendonitis. At some point, I'll probably learn to like paint my fingernails so you can't see the dye. Or what I should really do is wear gloves. But I uh, always seem to forget that. So anyway, so sorry about that. All that like purple dye under my nails. Anyway, so I just wanted to, in this terrible light, go ahead and say that. And so you can see this fleece uh, raw. And I will go ahead and start my usual process of the video, taking out a section of this sample of the washed raw, placing it on the sample card. And I'll have this all flicked out and ready to spin. This is going to be a long breed study, or at least it's going to take a long time between the time I actually film it and the time I finish it because I have two different samples. Gulf Coast Native and I want to spin them both. And so my first sample is from the stash of Knit Fairy Fairy Tales. So this one is already washed. And the second sample is from High Hog Farm. Let me share the picture. And this right here, here is uh, Gloria Bell. And Keisha from High Hog Farm participates in the Save Em to Shave Em, which is the 
livestock breed conservatory uh, push to use uh, wools that are on the um, conservatory list. So if you haven't gone over to the American Livestock Breed Conservatory page, travel on over there and check out the different livestocks that are um, under conservation. Uh, at one point I was raising the silver fox, um, which were threatened and so were the giant angoras. And so you can get a listing of the different breeds if you're interested in raising a breed that needs conservation. So at any rate, um, you can reach her online or at Facebook. And I also believe on Instagram, uh, High Hog Farm. And I'll have that information um, in my description. Okay, so I've got four ounces of Gloria Bell. And I can't wait to spin her up. Okay, so I have my little cheat sheet here because it's late at night. And as I said, the Gulf Coast Native is on the critical uh, breeds list. Um, it's a medium breed, uh, mostly for meat. And it's one of the oldest breeds in the U.S. Uh, the rams are 150 to 190 pounds. You use 100 to 140. The fleece is mostly white uh, to tan. Uh, it's an open fleece, which means that it's wool-free on the faces, the legs, and the belly. Um, the fleece is roughly four to six pounds raw. A micron count from 26 to 32, so it's variable. It's generally soft, open, low grease, wavy to crimpy, with a staple length of two to four inches, and it felts well. So it's a really nice fleece for hand spinning. Okay, so I have the examples here. This is the raw. And you can really see that crimp in there. That's beautiful crimp. This is a really nice staple length. At least five inches or so. Very nice staple length. Put this over here. And then this is the washed one. Look at that crimp. Beautiful crimp. And basically um, I'm going to do what I normally do with everything. We're going to flick it. So here's my giant hand carter. And I just lay the tips down. Flick the tips to open them up. Turn it over. Flicking the sheared ends. And I'm opening it up as well as getting rid of any second cuts and shorts. Okay, and you can see how it just fluffs out to beautiful springiness. And I have the Nancy's fleece done. I'm just going to pour it out here so you can see that. Wonderful loft. I am going to wash up the other fleece. And I will start the spinning on that. Uh, one of the things that I'm also doing is... I'm saving up the short snaps or whatever because it felt well. And so um, this there's something I can do with this particular uh, group here. I'll think of something, maybe dryer balls or something, because most of the fleece I work with, as you know, are down breeds. So they're not going to felt very well. So this is my opportunity to have a little something here to felt into something interesting. Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and get to the sprint spinning part. I'll see you then. Now, I really regret uh, being so hasty in taking the video at night because I can see through the replay that it's a really weird glare. So sorry about that. I'm still working on this video thing. At any rate, here are the two samples spun up. This right here is the fairy tales sample from the Stash of Knit Fairy. And this is from High Hog Farm. And let me tell you a little bit about the Gulf Coast Native. Being a medium fiber, I wanted to be really careful, like I am with the down breeds, not to spin it too hard because you don't want to kind of turn it to rope. Um, and so I put this one on the Biggest Whirl 
for the first world of the ladybug if you're not familiar with the ladybugs um, this one came with two different world sizes like a small medium and then a medium large and so I've been using the small medium one with the smallest world to spin thinner yarns and I just kind of go up from there so it's on that last drive of that one and I keep saying this but at some point I'm going to write down the ratios for the worlds so for those of you who are actually interested I can tell you exactly what ratio I'm using on here okay uh, I was really careful with how hard I spun it how much twist I put into it uh, I don't exactly measure it when I'm spinning for the crimp but I really am spinning for crimp because the crimpier fibers need more twists and I just kind of do it automatically knowing that from the the type of fiber and the texture of it I tried not to put too much twist into this yarn while I was drafting and it's very springy and it came out really lofty which is basically what I expected from the feel and the handle of the fiber it's going to be medium coarse um, gloves that kind of stuff I can't wait to make a really nice pair of mittens from this it's gonna be so warm and it's just so lofty uh, let me show you close up of those two let me see if I can get this just a little bit brighter for you okay so it's a little bit brighter and hopefully it doesn't affect what you're seeing too much it's really nice now what I'm going to do is drop these two inside of a crock pot and uh, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and dye them at the same time and then you'll have a good idea of how it takes up dyes as a medium breed I'm kind of expecting it to take up dyes a lot like the down breeds but that may not be true because there's something particular about the down breed and the scales on the down breed that give them kind of a muted tone. And so that might ne not necessarily be true with the Gulf Coast native. So just putting that out there, I'm going to go ahead and decide what color I'm going to dye them and then go ahead and drop them in. My, my thing is the um, whole um, Aztec gold, of course, and the Jacquard purple. So maybe I'll just go ahead and do the those two for this. Both of the skeins are now complete. Gave them a little dye job, and here they are. I think they turned out really nicely. Uh, and I really enjoyed the Gulf Coast Native. And uh, I, I do think it has a little bit of a shimmer to it. Kind of like uh, long wool meets a down breed sort of thing going on. And... It was just really, really springy as I was winding it up. Uh, that felt really nice. It was incredible. And I can't wait to use it up. For now, it's going to go into my stash for something something nice in the future. Well, hopefully, uh, in your restudy journey, you'll get a chance to try out the Gulf Coast Native. Hopefully, you'll enjoy it as much as I did. And hopefully this video will be of some use to you. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Share with a friend. Click the thumbs up button. Uh, and also the descriptions are, well, the information on High Hog Farm is in the description box. So visit Keisha and uh, get some Gulf Coast Native. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day.